All right, guys, let's take a look at another extra vector addition question for the test that we have coming up here. Uh, this one has 50 volts that's happening at 0 degrees, and it has 20 volts that's starting at 50 degrees. So the example here is that, you know, maybe we have a series circuit where we have 50 volts dropped across the first load and 20 volts dropped across the second load, but they don't happen at the same time. This 50 volts is being dropped at 0 degrees, so it's a resistive load. But this 20 volts, it starts its sine wave at 50 degrees. So those two voltages don't happen at the same time. So it's not like we can just add them up and get the 70 volts for the source because they don't happen at the same time. So what we're gonna to have to do is do the vector sum of these voltages and we'll find that in effect, it doesn't add up to the 70 volts that we'd usually see if they were both resistive loads. So how do we do that? Well, we've got two sine waves that are happening, and we can draw them in. These are just vector representations. They're lines with an angle that represent the sine waves and where the sine waves start. They have a magnitude or they have a length, and they have an angle at which they go off at. Right? This one's 50 volts, but it's sitting right on the x-axis. This one's 20 volts, so it's drawn a little bit smaller, and it's happening at 50 degrees. That angle is always in reference to the x-axis. Now this could have been drawn like this, where we have this vector right here, right? So these two are, you know, tried to be drawn the exact same here. That angle of 50 degrees is right here. And so you can see that it doesn't matter whether we started with the red vector and then the blue vector, or whether we did the blue vector and then the red vector, we always end up at the exact same spot. So what we've done is we've drawn in this parallelogram and you can either draw it in here with the blue, then the red vector, or the red, and then the blue vector. I choose to, to place things, you know, as much as I can on the x-axis here. So I've made this one my first vector, and I've made the 20 volts as my second vector. But again, it doesn't matter which one you start with, you always end up at the exact same spot. So the resultant is from where you started to where you ended up. Okay, so we have a number of different um, triangles happening there. We've got the, the red triangle, we've got the, the blue triangle there. So what we've done is this vector right here, we've dropped this down to the x-axis and created a right angle triangle. With the red vector, we don't have to do anything because there is no angle. Okay, so now what we need to do is we need to organize our thoughts in a chart. Now there's all kinds of ways you can do this. You can just draw out these triangles, right? One two triangles, three triangles uh, on the page, or you can do this and organize everything in a chart. So my first vector is has a hypotenuse of 50 volts. The angle is zero degrees. And my second vector has a hypotenuse of 20 volts, and the angle is 50 degrees. So what I need to do is I need to add up the x components of either one of them. You can see that they are on the same plane, so I can add them together. Then I have to find the y components of both and add them together. For the x component, that's essentially the adjacent. And based off of cos, based off of cos, uh, we've got the adjacent or the x component equal to the cos of the angle times the hypotenuse. So here we've got cos of 0 times 50, which obviously gives us 50 because there's no angle. And for the opposite, or this side right here, here you can see that there's no angle, so obviously that has to be zero, but it's the sine of the angle times the hypotenuse. So sine of zero times 50 gives us zero. For this second triangle here, for the 20 volt vector, well, in order to find the adjacent or the x component, I have to do cos of 50 times my hypotenuse of 20, which gives me 12.855. Now be careful with your calculator. Um, you may need to do uh, press cos first and then 50, or you're going to do 50 cos. It depends on your calculator. Then you're going to multiply that by the hypotenuse of 20. That should give you 12.855. For the y component, or the opposite, that's sine of the angle times the hypotenuse. So sine of 50 times 20 gives us 15.320. Okay, we'll try and stick to three decimal places. You know, two decimal places at the minimum, and then your values will be closer to my values on the screen here. Uh, the other thing to be careful of is uh, you'll get dyslexic at some point, and you'll switch the 20 volts 
uh, and the 50 degrees. So some people end up screwing this whole thing up because they end up doing this as the hypotenuse and this as the angle. So just keep track of the fact that you have the right magnitude going into the hypotenuse and your angle is going in for the angle. Otherwise, everything gets messed. Okay, at this point, what we need to do is we need to add them up. So going down here, we have found the the X component and the Y component for this larger green triangle here. Okay, so at this point, we need to just add up the 50 volts and the 12.855. So 50 plus 12.855 gives us 62.855. And what I've done is I've just redrawn that green triangle above. And so the X component is 62.855. The opposite, well, there's nothing here for the first vector. This value right here is 15.320. So 0 plus 15.320 gives us 15.320 for the opposite. At this point, you can now use sine or cos in order to find your hypotenuse. I like to use Pythagoras. So what I'm going to do is I'll use the adjacent value. Anything in this column is the adjacent. So my adjacent value squared plus the opposite value squared so you're adding those two areas but then we just want the length of the one side for the hypotenuse so we have to take the square root okay careful that you make use of these double brackets here okay, and put it into the calculator the way that it works some of them if you're using the, the smaller casios you have to do this 62.855 squared plus the 15.320 squared and then you hit the square root others if you can you have a graphical calculator you can put everything in you can do all this in one shot Okay, don't forget this final bracket here, and your answer should be 64.695, or something very close to that value. Okay, so that is our final resultant of 64.695 for this value right here. So we were looking for a voltage of 70 volts, but again, these two voltages don't happen at the same time. So we have a voltage that's close to 70 volts, but not exactly, at 64.695. The last thing we need to find is this angle right here right what the difference is between our total voltage and our total current uh, you can use sine or cos or tan because you have all the sides of the triangle now uh, i tend to use cos because we'll use that for power factor later on so in order to find that angle we'll take the inverse remember we use the inverse function for the angle inverse cos cos is the adjacent over the hypotenuse my adjacent is 62.855 my hypotenuse is 64.695. And again, depending on your, your calculator, um, you may need to do this ratio here first. So you may need to do 62.855 divided by 64.695 and then hit shift cos, or you can do it all in one shot. Second function, cos, then this ratio, and you'll find that the angle there is 13. 0.69 degrees. Okay, it's a shallow angle there. You can see that this value is quite large and this value is small. So this angle is going to be quite shallow there for the 13.69. At that point, we've got everything for the two vectors. We've now added two sine waves that are happening within the circuit. We have a vector representation of those sine waves. We've broken them down to the X and the Y components of both because they're not on the same plane, but the X and Y components are. At that point, we have the adjacent and the opposite for the final triangle, and we've used Pythagoras in order to find our resultant, and we found the final angle by using um, any of these values with sine, cos, and tan in order to find that final degree.